I'm very happy to be here today. I will speak about deformed Wigner matrices, but I will also speak about uh, usual Wigner matrices since an introductory talk. So what I present today is a joint work with Jiyun E from the KAIST in Korea and HD Yao. So let me start with uh, a Wigner matrix. It's a Hermitian random matrix uh, of size n whose entries are complex random variables that are independent up to the symmetry constraints I have here and centered and I put in here one over root n and I assume that the variances of this wij satisfy these conditions. Now for simplicity I will uh, want to assume that the distribution of this xij satisfy a uh, sub-exponential decay. So I see constant c and theta that are strictly positive. Special case of these matrices are the Gaussian unitary matrices for what I uh, was talking about yesterday. Now, since the work of Wigner, it's well known that the eigenvalues of such matrices follow the semicircle law. So for illustration, I have here a histogram of the eigenvalues of such a typical matrix of size and with n equal uh, 5,000. Okay. Now to define uh, deformed Wigner matrices, let me first introduce uh, another matrix. So I denote it V. It's a diagonal matrix of size n whose entries are IID, real random variables. And I will assume that they have a distribution, a Jacobi type distribution mu here, they, so it's supported on the interval minus one, one, and that the edge behavior is given by this exponent b, so it's between minus one and infinity. f is some sufficiently regular function, so I can smear over the distribution, but I will assume this is strictly positive, and c is a normalization constant to make this mu uh, probability measure. So, but note the, the variance of these entries vi, they are of order one, unlike for the Wigner matrix that the, entry, uh, the variances of this wij are one over root, uh, one over n. Now you formed Wigner matrices or Wigner matrix with random potential, so that I sum such a v together with a Wigner matrix, then introduce a uh, coupling constant lambda, I assume it's positive, and I will, in addition, I will assume that V and W are independent and we want to study the spec properties of such matrices, which is non-trivial in case lambda is a uh, number order one. It goes on to zero as n goes to infinity or goes not to infinity as n goes to infinity, okay? So it is known, um, so Pastor showed that the eigenvalues of such a matrix also follow a deterministic law to the limit n to infinity which is uh, called, or which I will call the deformed semicircle law and denoted by mu fc. So here's an illustration, uh, simulation I chose, dv, which is here one third, and the f I said equal to one, and then if you have a histogram of such a deformed matrix with lambda equal to two. So in black, we have the standard semicircle law, so it is two, and then in green, the histogram of these matrices. So it looks like, a, almost like a semicircle, but with a bit of a radius. For, and the same situation with lambda, I said it's actually equal to four. And even if lambda is big, it gets flattened out in the middle, uh, but at the end, I still have a semicircular type uh, decay. Okay. Now to define, or to define this uh, distribution, this deformed semicircle distribution, I mean, I want to use the Yeltsin or Cauchy transform of, uh, of probability measures. So if omega is a probability measure, then I define its Yeltsin transform m omega of c, this formula. So c is a complex number in the upper half plane, so that the right hand side here defines an analytic function of c. Now from this Yeltsin transform, I can't recover the measure omega, at least if it's absolutely continuous, but this inversion formula, I look at the imaginary part of this Yeltsin transform and take eta, which is the imaginary part of uh, here to 
zero for my product. So for example, if I have the semicircle law, and you can compute the edges transform explicitly, and you check that it satisfies this relation. Now you can go the other way around, say, okay, I start from here. I want to solve the quadratic equation for M mu FC and pick the solution that has a positive imaginary part, and then I feed it into the inversion formula, and that really will recover the semicircle law. Now to deform semicircle law is uh, one way to define it is exactly in that way. I say it the Elchus transform satisfies this type of relation, sometimes called the Basel relation. It's a, as you can see, it's a generalization of the semicircle law here. And um, well, first thing you have to do is to check that this equation actually has a, a solution, a unique solution, and it is not so hard to see if one uh, in, well, supposes that the imaginary part of M of C, mu of C is positive. So once you've solved for this, then you feed it into the inversion formula and this defines you a measure. And it turns out that this measure is absolutely continuous. Even more, the density is a, is a regular function inside the, the point. An alternative definition of this uh, uh, deformed semicircle law is through a Voiculescu three probability theory, which can be described as the additive free convolution of the semicircle law and the, the measure mu, but I'm gonna go into details here. Now for the special choice of this Jacobi measure I had before, the free convolution measure or this deformed semicircle law is supported on a single interval and the density is strictly positive, so I denote the interval by minus L, uh, L minus and L plus. Good. So I wanna talk next about uh, the eigenvectors of Wigner matrices or deformed Wigner matrices. So if I denote by Lambda alpha, the eigenvalues of this in such a matrix in descending order. By U alpha, the associated, I denote the associated normalized eigenvectors, and by U alpha K, the case component of the alpha the eigenvector. Then it is known, or it was shown by Erdos, Schlein, and Yao, that the, the eigenvectors are fully or completely delocalized, which means I have such a type of inequality for all alpha and k. Here this symbol means up to logarithmic corrections with very high probability for n sufficiently large. Now for the deformed model, we have a similar result. Um, so I will assume first that B, this exponent in the Jacobi measure, is strictly less than one. Then using the similar methods then used by Erdoslan and Yao, one also shows that all eigenvectors are completely localized. However, if this exponent b is strictly larger than one, the situation changes. So I'll give an illustration. Now I choose b equal to four. Then you see in the histogram of the eigenvalue, which is lambda small, as I say, two, I still have a semicircular type behavior for the eigenvalue, but if b, uh, if lambda is sufficiently large here, simply four is large enough, then the decay at the edge changes and I get a, a tail, so I here have a convex uh, decay. Now what does this mean for, well, the first, let me specify it a little bit, so if, if <laughs> b is strictly larger than one, then there exists a constant, uh, say lambda plus, it can be computed explicitly, <coughs> such that, such that, the, that the semis, uh, deformed semicircular law behaves like a square root at the edge if lambda is smaller, strictly smaller than this lambda plus. Here kappa e denotes the distance from e to the upper edge. However, if, if lambda is bigger than this lambda plus, then the decay uh, or the behavior is governed by this exponent b in the similar uh, result holds uh, uh, for the lower edge. Okay. Now, I will assume that the entries of my diagonal matrix that they are uh, ordered, just to simplify <coughs> notation, then what we show is that for lambda strictly less than this lambda plus, then all the eigenvectors are still completely 
delocalized, so I add it here square, so I have here one over n. However, if I'm above this lambda plus, then the eigenvectors in the bulk of this vector are completely localized over similar size inequality. But at the extreme edge, the eigenvectors are partially localized. What do I mean by that? So at the edge, there, there's one component of the eigenvectors that carries a weight of order one as n goes to infinity or for n sufficiently large, whereas the other uh, components, so here we have k is different from alpha, they, uh, we have this upper bound here, uh, which is well is governed by, by the entries of the diagonal matrix V. Okay. So if k is far away from alpha, then this thing here is order one, and I recover similar type inequality than, a, than above. Now to maybe say something about the fluctuations of the largest eigenvalue. Um, so um, lambda one is the largest eigenvalue of, of my deformed matrix. Then it approaches L plus, so the upper edge as n tends to infinity. But we have, uh, you can say, uh, much more. If I'm in the delocalized regime, then the fluctuations of the top eigenvalue are Gaussian. So I take uh, the distance from the edge to the eigenvalue, I rescale it by uh, root n, then this thing converges to a Gaussian whose variance can be, uh, uh, it's a slightly complicated formula, but we can uh, compute it quickly. However, if we're in the delocalized regime, then um, the situation is different. We have to rescale in a different way, and the fluctuations are no more Gaussian, but are described by this uh, Weibull uh, distribution. So now, um, to conclude, let me just mention uh, the tracy Widom law uh, Paul may talked about yesterday. So, so for lambda equals zero, so for Wigner matrices, we have this type of fluctuation, so this is tracy Widom law, slightly complicated form here. Q is a solution of the Turnaway uh, equation with these boundary conditions. A, AI is the area function of uh, first time. So this is first shown, well, for theory by tracy Widom. Then uh, we have Shoshnikov uh, under some technical assumption in full generality by Erde, Xiao, and Yin for Wigner matrices with sub-exponential decay. And recently by Li and Yin, they found a necessarily sufficient condition on the decay of the entries so that we get tracing. Now for the deformed model, what is known, uh, at least when W is a GUE matrix, it is known that Tracy Widom holds true if my lambda is tiny. So if lambda is less than n to the minus one six. This was shown by Johansson and Tatiana uh, Sherbnina, and it was also shown by, uh, uh, by Johansson that the transition from the Tracy Widom to the Gaussian fluctuation precisely on scale uh, lambda n to the minus one six. But I'm not aware of that this has been proven for, for Wigner matrices in general. So one of them. 